to see you all. Good to be back. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, this 175th anniversary of Fannettsburg Reformed Church is this afternoon. And uh, uh, the, the angels and I will be down there. And you all come on down and celebrate with them. Uh, trustees meet Tuesday. And uh, Father's Day is next week. Boy, Mother's Day to Father's Day got quick, didn't it? It did. Bring your baby bottles back next week, okay? So we can uh, get them to the uh, Crisis Pregnancy Center. And uh, I need to meet with uh, whatever angels we have today. I'm not sure how many are going to be here. I'm right after service. So, um, are there any other announcements? Okay. They're thirteen dollars for the pizza star. It's money that will go to shipping for Shoebox Ministry. Okay. But it's a large pizza. A large, a large pizza. Pizza with one topping. With one topping. Okay. So if you uh, want to help uh, the Shoebox Ministry send their shoe boxes, um, buy a pizza. Right? How much? Do you, do you know what they get out of it? I think $3 a pizza. Okay. All right. So it's a large pizza, so help them out. Who else? I think the first song is 47, right? The first song is 47. Thank you. And we have a birthday. The words are wrong, but the song number is right. There's a birthday coming up. There's a birthday coming up. Somewhere down in this area, I think. Somewhere down this area? Who would that be? Is that your sister? I think it is. Who's that? service last week and uh, I'm just kind of wondering now when I asked who has something to share what we're going to get that was kind of exciting last week how many of you were here last week to hear that if you haven't heard the testimony of Donna and Pam you need to go on the website and look it up because that was a powerful sharing powerful testimony last week of and God's hand and it's still continuing. Uh, the people coming in are taking pictures of the pictures, oh, okay. and they are just—I mean, I mean, they're sharing them with everybody. They're—they're they're all around. Uh, the picture of the the one with the cross in it—it's—it's it's gone viral. Praise God. Yep. He doesn't need to show us a sign, but when he does, we're going to take it and spread right. the word. Amen. Amen. Who else? Y'all are bashful now, are you? Chris and I had a lot of work with you yesterday, and God's help, we made it through. Yep. All, all week. All week long. All week. Anybody else? Let's sing our opening hymn number 52. <laughs> Things change. <laughs>
on our prayer list there this morning, if you will look about three quarters of the way down, you'll see Deborah's name. For those of you who haven't heard, uh, on Thursday before we were leaving, she stepped into the bathtub and something happened to her good leg to such an extent that now she's on a walker. Uh, and every now and then I've got to wheel her around in, in the uh, uh, her office chair. So um, she is really struggling with that those legs. So uh, remember her this week. Um, we want her wax. Get her back back on both feet would be great. But yeah. At least get her one a good one. Okay. We also got something that you want to add to the prayer list. Have to have you stand up front so that everybody who looks on the on the YouTube can see who you are. <laughs> <laughs> who is that guy he's picking on all the time? <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. Just for myself, but, um, I have a lot of stuff going on. Um, my pulse is really high. I have echocardiogram going up. They put me on high blood pressure medicine. I see the surgeon for my... Sure. Let's pray. Father, we are so blessed to know that not only do you hear our prayers, but you have answers for us. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, that you're still in the miracle business. Yes. We saw that last week. Yes. You're still producing miracles upon miracles. And Father, many of these people on our list and those who we have just listed need your miracle touch. Yes. We are so thankful that nothing's impossible with you. Father, in Jesus' name, just reach down and touch each one and let each one experience something, a, a, a very special presence even now as we are interceding for them, as we lift them up, Father, that your Holy Spirit would visit them. Should any of them not have a relationship with you, may today be their day that they find not only you as God, but Jesus as their Savior. We pray for our military personnel all around the globe, Father. Thank you for their willingness to serve. Thank you, Father, that you are with them and help them recognize your presence today, especially those who may not know you. Father, just pour out your protection and your blessing upon them. We pray for the leaders of our government, Father, that they too would come to the realization that only trusting your will and your way will this country ever be right. Father, it's not so much that we become great again as much as that we become right again, righteous before you. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem that Israel would come to know their Messiah as our Lord Jesus. And the Arabs around that area, Father, they too would come to know that Jesus is their answer. And all these things, Father, we pray and we praise you for and give you thanks for. And it's all because of Jesus in whose name we pray the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us receive our morning tithes and offerings.
we thank you for these gifts and tithes and offerings. Use them for your glory. Touch someone's life for Jesus, and we'll give you the praise in his name. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together, Spirit of God, we sing upon my heart. <clears throat> church has ever had. Its earliest beginnings, although it was not put together as we know it today, the earliest beginnings happened in the third century when there was a strong debate basically about who Jesus really was. And that's how the, this confession began to be formulated. Finally, in, sometime during the the, the 8th century, it was finally kind of put together after a, uh, a conference in Milan. And so what we have, although it has changed and varies from de various denominations, what we have basically is that creed. The oldest creed of the Christian church. And we're going to ask us at this point in time if we would. Confess that together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from, him from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. churches. We are Bible-believing churches. Amen. We believe the Bible to be the inspired, inerrant Word of God. It's fundamental. It's Christianity 101. We believe in God. Yeah. So why do we believe in God? The answer is really quite simple. It's not because of scientific discovery that tries to speak of a Big Bang. The obvious question and to those who believe in the Big Bang is one bang. If all matter and all existence and everything that is comes from a big bang again then what bang? What was there before the bang? And science of course does not and cannot answer that question. Several scientists were having a discussion with God. 
And finally one said, we can make a person the same way you did. And God says, well, go ahead and try. Picking up several hands full of dirt, they began to fashion some kind of figure. When God stopped them, wait a minute, fellas. If you're going to do it my way, you've got to start with your own dirt. got to start with your own dirt. So we say we believe in God. Well, what kind of God do we believe in? Paul is in Athens. And what does he find there? Strangely enough, it's not atheism. He finds just the opposite. He finds shrines to God, to a God on every street corner and every block. He even finds a, an altar to an unknown God. Just in case they miss one. But Paul then speaks in the text in which you were, is in your bulletin. God then speaks to them about this very God who is God. Acts chapter 12. So Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I observe that you are very religious in all aspect, respects. For while I was passing through and examining the objects of your worship, I also found an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. Therefore, what you worship in ignorance, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and all things in it, since He is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is He served by human hands, as though He needed anything, since He Himself gives to all people life and breath and all things. And He made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation, that they would seek God if perhaps they might grope for Him and find Him. Though He is not far from each one of us, for in Him we live and move and exist. As even some of your own poets have said, for we are His children. This God that He is proclaiming to them, He says, this God is the God who created everything. This is the God. There is no other God beside Him. He's the Lord of all the heavens and all the earth. He no longer dwells in temples. He dwells in the hearts people. Not things that are built with man. Not objects on the wall. Not shrines. He lives in the lives of individuals. Not built with hands. He's a God who has everything and needs nothing. He is the God. He's the one who has given everything to everybody. Regardless of what they, whether they believed or not, everybody has been given what God has given them. It all goes back to Him. As He says, because it's in Him that we live and move and even have our existence. We can't even exist without Him. And even their poets said we are His children not even knowing who His was. Somehow, as we look around even our society, we see people who have some kind of faith in some kind of God. In fact, I dare say that there isn't anybody who doesn't have a God. That's they, that, that is the center of their lives. Some are jobs, some are families. Some's money. Everybody has 
a God. There is no true atheist. There can't be. Because you see, if there's a true atheist, then there's no really reason for them to even exist. If there is no God at all, some thinks it's the government. Some thinks it's the leader of the government. Worship what you may. There is only one God. A friend of mine in Ohio this past week was telling me a, a story about her pastor teaching some children about God, about creation. And one of the little girls in the group that he was teaching asked this question. Where did God come from? Well, where did God come from? To which the pastor's response, hold on to your hands, was, that's a good question. I don't know. I'll have to research that. A pastor teaching kids that didn't even know where God came from. Sadly, that's what our seminaries are putting out today. She looked at me and she said, What do you think? And I said, Simple. God always was. There has never been a moment, and that's using our terms, there's never been a moment in which God wasn't. God is, period. God is. When He spoke to Moses, He says, He said to Moses in identifying who He was, I am. That's God. He's not a was or a will be. He is. Period. Hello. He is. That's the God of the Bible. That's the God whom we serve. I've got three very impressive words down there for you. Did you see those very impressive words? You're going to learn something, today, right? The first thing that we need to focus on is the fact that God is omnipotent. Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He's all-powerful. That confession, I believe in God Almighty. We'll deal with Father next week since it's Father's Day. I believe in God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Almighty. All powerful, nothing greater. Why? Because everything else has been created by Him. Everything. He's the creator of heaven and earth. Let me give you another fancy word. Ech nihalo. Ech nihalo. That's a word that has been used all the way through. From, from my very beginning of understanding anything about God, ech nihilo, which means out of nothing. Out of nothing. God created everything out of nothing. Think about it for a moment. As the Bible tells us, in the beginning, God created. He saw that there was a void that means nothingness. There was nothing. And His Spirit hovered over the nothingness. And with a word, things began to change. God said, light! And there was light. With just a word over this which was absolutely void of anything, God spoke and it happened. Everything in Genesis chapter 1. God spoke and it happened. God spoke until the final creation. And 
that he formed with his own hands. And you're sitting in one of the pews that your position has filled by his hands. Almighty, out of nothing, out of total emptiness, and the word produced the light. That's the God of the Bible. That's the God that we confess in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God Almighty. That's the God. That's Him. Whether that's your God or not, you have to choose, but that's God. Secondly, not only is He omnipotent, He is omnipresent. The psalmist writes it this way, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. You're there. There is no place that God isn't. No place. That's both good news and bad news. The good news is, is that He's always with us. The bad news is, is that He's always with us. Wherever we go, He goes with us. Because He's always there. Because He's omnipresent. Always there, everywhere, all at once. No matter who we are or where we live, He's there. God is omnipresent. I can't explain it. But I know one thing. God has proved it to me time and time and time again. And I know of at least two ladies mm -hmm. that know it. He's there. He's with us. You know, Paul tells us that there will be one day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord both in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And even in hell, listen here, even in hell, God's there. Even in hell, God's there. And those who are in hell because of their lack of, of, of choice to follow God and to choose Jesus as their Savior, those who are there will bow on their knees and confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God without ever getting the benefit of it. Never getting the benefit of it. And always having to say, Jesus is Lord because their choices put them there. You see, the God who is always present is also the judge. And He will, as we see later on, He judge the quick, the living, and the dead. So not only is He almighty, omnipotent, and omnipresent, but He's also omniscient. Again, from Psalm 139. O oh Lord, You search me and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. There isn't a thought in our heads. There isn't a word on our lips. There isn't an action that we perform that God is already aware of. I guess that's good news and I guess that's bad news. God knows. God knows every aspect about our lives. In fact, later on in that psalm, down in verses 14, 15, and 16, it says, even when I was created, remember two weeks ago, even when I was created, you knew me. Even before I was created, you knew me. God has plans for us. And He knows the plans for us. It's up to us to fill in our lives into those plans. But remember, God knows. There's nothing we can hide from Him. Hide it from anybody else. Look pious as you can on Sunday morning. God knows. 
We can't get away with anything. Some of you who have, you, you, you remember those days in which uh, your mother or even your dad knew what you were into before you knew that they knew? Hello? And all of a sudden, we come to the recognition of the fact that God knew it even before they knew it. The reality is, is that old word says you can't get away with anything. You can't get away with anything. God knows. The psalmist elsewhere tells us that God knows our frame. God knows who we are. God knows we're but grass that withers and fades. Flowers that come and go. God knows. And the reality is, is that it should also be comforting. To know that God is almighty, that nothing's impossible with Him. To know that God is always with us. To know that God knows every aspect of our lives no matter what. That should be comforting to us as well. To know that God cares for us so much. And remember, even the hairs of our head are numbered. That's how much God knows about us. That's the God of the Apostles' Creed. That's the God that this church has proclaimed for decades and centuries almost. In fact, that's the God. When they came over the mountain and founded the church. That was the God that brought them through. That's the God of our fathers. But more importantly, the question is, is that your God? Is it our God? No one is exempt from knowing it. Paul says it and makes it clear in Romans chapter 1. He says, what may be known of God is plain to them. And he's talking about those who say there is no God. Those who live like there is no God. But he says it's plain to them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even His eternal power in Godhead. And they have no excuse. Every time I hear a newborn baby cry, or touch a leaf, or see the sky, they have no excuse. None of us do. So who do you believe in? What is your faith attached to? Who is your God? Praise God that He has made Himself known as omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient for all of us. Thank God. He's God. Pray with me. Father, we give You thanks and praise this morning that we can confess, I believe in God. I believe in God the Almighty. I believe in the same God that made all things possible. I believe in the God, the only true God. Father, help us eradicate those little gods in our lives that stop us from really worshiping you for who you are. Thank you for revealing yourself to us. Thank you, Father, that you've made it quite plain if we would just look and behold. Father, should anyone here 
not have that relationship with you. May this day be the day that they seek you and find you as you have made yourself so available and visible. Thank you for being our God. In Jesus' precious and powerful name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let us sing our concluding hymn, The Wonder of It All. Thank you.